So almost all of us would profess that we, what we desire is greater intimacy in our lives. And that is to say, whether we're married or single, that we want to be known and loved. We want to be known and valued. And, you know, it's very much human nature to want to belong and to have rich relationships. We don't want to live our lives feeling misunderstood or in isolation or lonely. Um, and indeed, loneliness is painful and it's bad for our mental health. It's even bad for our physical health. In fact, there's research that shows that being extremely lonely has a similar effect on your physical health as smoking does. So, so often, as I mentioned earlier, that divorce is linked to these challenges around emotional and sexual isolation or feeling misunderstood by your spouse. So many people that come in to work with me, their, their presenting issue is this feeling of isolation and the feeling of being misunderstood. Sometimes they talk about it as communication problems, but as I'll be speaking about, this is about a difficulty with really knowing and being known and tolerating the, what that process creates in us. So as true as it is, you know, that we want to be uh, understood, we want to belong, we want to be valued, we are in fact much less interested in actual intimacy than I think many of us realize. Because while we want to be accepted, very few of us truly want to be known. You think about it, that's why social media is so compelling is it's the, the perfect presentation of ourselves that we can really curate how we're seen. And it's very tempting to want to present to the world a picture of ourselves that is flawless or at least a cut above the human condition in some way. We have this fantasy that if we are that, then we will be lovable. So, you know, it's human nature to want our spouse, our friends, our family to value us, to see our talents and gifts and to acknowledge the laudatory aspects of us. But in reality, we also want them to go blind to or not see the underdeveloped parts of us or the uglier parts of us. We want them to look past our limitations and our self-deceptions. In fact, we often confuse this with love, right? In the name of love, we will pressure those around us to not see us. If you love me, pretend with me that I'm kinder or less selfish than I really am, right? If you love me, take care of me and let me get away with not growing into a person who takes full responsibility for her life. Right. If you love me, do what makes me comfortable. I don't want to know you, right? at least not the parts I don't want to deal with, or see more about who I am through your eyes. That's the trouble with marriage. Okay, That's the trouble with this, an honest spouse is you start seeing yourself more through their eyes, and this is uncomfortable. We often don't want it, and what we can do is instead of deal with what they see about us, we will try to shoot the messenger, you know, say, you don't understand me, you're not being fair, when in fact, it's a way to dodge what we might be able to understand about ourselves by being loved and known by them. Of course, it's understandable why so many of us want a kind of love that validates us, that accepts us just as we are. We want the comfort of it. We want the parental love or the unconditional acceptance that we once knew as a very young child. But in grown-up relationships, this is a fantasy that we can do things the way we currently are comfortable and find full approval by everyone. <laughs> it's just not how life works. And I think a lot of us imagine that this is what we need in order to feel good about ourselves, that we can convince those around us that we are sufficient. Um, in reality, this is very much a trap when we try to do this. When we're trying to keep everyone happy with us, it's very difficult to live authentically, to live honestly, and to live your why, to, to cite Tammy's idea, that if we are so compelled by keeping other people thinking we're legitimate in their eyes, we're in fact trapped by them. What many of us imagine when we get married is that if we have found the ideal marriage partner, the right person for us, 
that they will provide that kind of unconditional acceptance, that ongoing IV drip of validation for eternity. That's what most of us secretly want <laughs> when we decide to get married. Of course, this is not what we get, and this can be challenging, right? The, the good, as good as this might feel, this fantasy, this hope that we will have someone who will approve of us fully, even in our flawed state, there are two problems with this conception of love. If we're truly known because someone only, if we aren't truly known because someone only sees the good parts, we still don't have intimacy, right? And therefore we still feel lonely. Because if you believe your approval is based on a farce, on pretense, then you're, you still are not fully loved and accepted. They love you because they don't fully see you is what you may imagine. And as good as that validation may feel, you know you are still not free, free to be yourself, free to be known, free to be valued. And so we usually feel we must continue to put on a show hide, pretend, live dishonestly to keep the approval we need and desire in place. We had this lovely babysitter years ago who was just incredibly kind. She always said the most affirming things about my children, how wonderful they were, how kind they were, et cetera, et cetera. One day my daughter said to me, Joanna is so nice, mom, but I kind of hate having her babysit. <laughs> and I was really surprised. I was like, you're kidding, why? She says, because I feel so much pressure to not disappoint her. I have to pretend that I'm kind all the time <laughs> and it gets exhausting. <laughs> so while I wasn't sure that this was such a bad thing, <laughs> she says, it's a little bit like having Jesus babysit is what she said. <laughs> she said that while it wasn't entirely a bad thing in some ways to have her be aware of her behavior, she made a valid point that it can feel in fact isolating and lonely if you feel like you have to pretend to keep up to keep another person's approval. And so, you know, again, as good as that validation may feel, we're not really free. If you're going to have an intimate relationship, you have to let yourself be knowable and to be knowable, you have to be willing to be honest. And if a lot of us want connection and a feeling of closeness, but we fear the fundamental requirements for real closeness, which is honesty. Being honest is very courageous behavior. If we need other people's approval to feel good about ourselves, it's very difficult to show others who we really are. Being honest is exposing and you sacrifice control over how you're seen. And for this reason, it's very uncomfortable. That is to say, if we are honest, we potentially sacrifice the approval we want. And that is in two ways. We sacrifice both the approval of others, right? As they may disapprove of what we say, honestly think, believe, or do. And importantly, we may even sacrifice our own approval, which I think is a very important piece of this. This is not just about your relationship to others. It's also your relationship to yourself. It's often not just the deception of others that keeps us in isolation, but the deception of ourselves that keeps us in isolation. When we lie to ourselves, we compromise our peace of mind. We're a house divided against itself. We can't be settled in our own skin. And I don't think I can overstate how important this is, right? It's, it, we want to have true confidence. We want to be at peace with ourselves. And often we are in these kind of contradictions of meaning and contradictions between what we believe is good and what we do that creates division and anxiety within us. Um, so it's very easy to lie to ourselves, right? I mean, a lot of times people talk about uh, natural man being about sexuality, but I think natural man is this tendency to self-deceive, that we want to tell ourselves stories that justify our current understanding and our current choices. We want to tell ourselves stories that obscure what's real for the sake of what's comfortable or familiar to us. And we don't like the insecurity that confronting what is, is true seemingly inflicts upon us. So to be honest, 
to be intimate, right, is to tolerate dealing with what is true about ourselves and about our relationships. It pushes us into growth because we can't tell ourselves a story that justifies us or comforts us. Is it any wonder that honesty is an act of faith? That truth is so integrally connected to faith because to live honestly is an act of faith. It's an act of courage to align ourselves with what is true and to tolerate the discomfort and the uncertainty that will follow from that, right? So if you come into an understanding, like I have seen myself as being more fair than I really am, or I remember a conversation with my spouse once where I was just completely convinced that he was deluded and I had the right view. <laughs> and I would have, I would have put good money on this position. I, I was very confident in my, in the rightness of my position, but I, I, I said, you know, I, the, the Stephen Covey idea came into my head, seek first to understand, then be understood. So I was like, you know, go ahead, give me your impaired view. <laughs> and then we'll get on to me being understood. And he explained how he saw what I was doing and how that was impacting him and why he thought it was unfair. And all of a sudden it just blew up my view. I mean, because I could see it and I knew he was right and it was a blind spot in me. And the tempting thing was to basically find the, you know, the limitations in what he had just said or come up with excuses for why it was justified that I had said or done what I was doing and to try and obliterate his view so I could keep doing it the way I was doing it. That's, that's intimacy. And instead it was, okay, he's right. I need to see what I'm doing and that it's not as good or virtuous or fair as I was imagining. And so it means stepping into a different self-conception. It's tolerating the exposure in that moment that I'm not everything I thought, right? And I'm being unkind. And to let yourself, let the truth lead you into more development, to grow into a better, kinder person, a person who's got a better roadmap of what's true in life and about the people she loves and about herself, right? So often we profess to love the truth, but in reality, we do our very best to avoid it, okay? Because living truthfully is highly connected to growth or self-expansion. How often have you punished a spouse or friend for telling you what they see you doing? How often have we made someone feel bad for showing us a part of ourselves that we don't want to see? How often have you stepped away from a truth that you were afraid of? We sometimes talk about intimacy like it's a warm, fuzzy reality of human experience. And there's nothing wrong with validation and it feels wonderful, especially when it's, excuse me, especially when it's absolutely linked to something that is true, it feels wonderful. But the truth is that intimacy is hard. It is not for the faint of heart. Intimacy punctures any picture of perfection we may desire. It punctures any fantasy that we might somehow rise above our human condition. It punctures any attempt we may be involved in to elevate ourselves above others, or at least make others think we are above them. Of course, as challenging as it is to be honest and live truthfully, it's much more difficult in my experience, ultimately to live dishonestly. It costs us tremendously to live our lives in contradiction. It costs us peace of mind and honest confidence to live our lives, trying to paint pictures of ourselves that we know are not true. That attempt always isolates us from others and from ourselves. It isolates us from God. It undermines our development. It undermines our peace. It also costs other people because it gives them the false idea that there are people that are above the limitations of the human experience. It drives others into hiding, not just ourselves. And it's a very unkind thing to do to ourselves or other children of God. Christianity, the gospel, is very much a theology of love, right? Just as Tammy was talking about, a theology of intimacy. Christ taught us that love is the most important commandment, that it is the objective of faith. Love in relationship is the path to know wisdom. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, 12 speaks of, Then shall I know, even as I am known. 
He speaks of the intimacy that is fundamental to our spirituality and fundamental to our spiritual development. That it is in knowing and being known to one another and knowing and being known by God that we come to know what is true, right? It's in relationship that truth reveals itself. It is in seeing who we are and being seen that we can live more faithfully, more truthfully, and also move out of our isolation, isolation that's based in fear, not in courage. This is the path to honest self-acceptance. It's the path into our honest development and expansion of our capacity, right? Because, you know, in that moment where my husband showed me a view of myself that punctured my pretense, punctured my, what I wanted to have be true, it was a path now to step into being better, to being kinder, to being more fair. So as uncomfortable as it was, it actually expands your capacity if you will grow into it. So it, it facilitates your honest development and expansion of your capacity, which is different than fear-driven contempt of self and fear-driven attempts to present a perfectionistic view. Right, We often confuse perfectionism and flawlessness, which I think is fear-based, with love-based evolution, which is developmental and honesty-based and, and, and um, facilitated by the desire to love better. So to do this, to live honestly, we must sacrifice ego. We have to sacrifice control over how we are seen. We must sacrifice certainty and sacrifice our fantasy of being able to uh, manipulate or control how others perceive us. But if we have faith to live more honestly and to let ourselves be known, we find our strength. We find an honest self-acceptance. We find more ability to accept the love we are offered. And in reality, when we let go of the shackles of pretense, we find our freedom. My favorite scripture has always been, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It's simple, but profound. When we live honestly, when we live intimately, we sacrifice image and pretense, but we find solid ground. We find a solid foundation. When we live honestly, we're able to make choices and create a life based on what is real. We are able to find peace with ourselves and find real friendship we're able to find peace with God. So to live honestly is to find freedom, to find the ability to be flawed and in development, but truly free from anxiety of self-rejection and fear. Sacrificing approval for what is true makes you more solid, makes you wiser, and it also makes you more able to love others. This is why I often say that marriage is a divine institution because we promise God to love another and to know them and to let them know us. And this pressures us in ways that we may be unprepared for. Letting someone in on who you are and aren't yet shines a light on the dark places, the unseen places, in a way that helps us become more capable of love, more capable of knowing and being known. It's a sobering process, but a precious one. To create an honest marriage, to create an honest friendship, is to create, to create a home, right? It's the only way one can truly create a place of peace and refuge, whether that's within yourself or within an intimate partnership. It's a way of creating a refuge from a world that can be harsh. And the work I do working with couples in creating more intimate relationships, I've come to have a profound testimony of how confronting what is true takes tremendous faith, but pays off in our development and in our greater peace and in our greater, uh, deeper relationships. To witness that moral courage of a lot of people in challenging situations is a privilege. It's my hope that you will commit today to speak and live with greater honesty in relationship to yourself and in relationship to those you love. To speak what you know to be true, to align your behavior with what you know to be true, and to live up to your own integrity. This is salvation in an uncertain and conditional world. This is the way to find solid ground even though it takes tremendous courage to let go of the false gods that tempt you away from it. May you exercise your faith in a God who sees you in this process, who loves you and believes in your ability to align yourself with truth.
And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ.